Oh, that's great, thanks.
to St John's Parish Church this blustery morning for our service of Holy Communion this morning and um, this week we're marking Bible Sunday which is often um, towards the end of October but um, we're having it today and I'm really delighted to welcome Kathy Morling from the Bible Society who's going to be speaking to us later on in the service. My name is Beverly and I'm the Rector and welcome to all of you in church, in person, and uh, those joining us online as well. And then a special welcome if you're um, visiting us today or here for the first time. And do stay for coffee and a chat after the service. And if you're watching online, um, Pip is our online host and say, say hi to us in the comments. Let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, it's always lovely if we have children or young people. I think little Sophie's are on the way and we always have some space in the back for them to play and have a little wriggle and a chatter. All the words for the service and the hymns are on the screen and uh, we also have a few hymn books available if people prefer to use them and announce the numbers as well. And please feel free to join in with as little or as much of the service as you like and uh, join in with the words in bold yellow type on the order of service. Please stand. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that after Remembrance Sunday last week, we are mindful that we live in peace and in freedom and can come and worship you this morning. Lord, I pray that you will bless Kathy as she comes to speak to us and that you uh, will encounter each one of us afresh this morning by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God now together, across the miles, yet joined. The Lord be with you. And the Lord is with you. And we remain standing to sing our first hymn, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. And that's 330 in the source.
come now to a time of saying sorry to God. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. And we take a moment to allow the Holy Spirit to bring to mind anything from the past week where we want to say sorry to God. And we pray together. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of the Son, and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. And the collect the special prayer for today. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remain seated as Joel reads our first Bible reading. The first reading is taken from Isaiah 55. Invitation to the Thirsty. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear, and come to me. Listen, that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will not summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return unto it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and 
Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we remain standing as Heather reads our Gospel reading. Gospel reading is taken from John, chapter 5, verses 36 to 47. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I have testimony weightier than that of John, said Jesus, for the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form. Nor did his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You study the scriptures diligently, because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you, I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me, but if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe, since you accept glory from one another, but do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And now I'm delighted to welcome Cathy Morling from the Bible Society, who's going to speak to us about the work of the Bible Society this morning. And uh, Cathy's going to, to lead us in a prayer now before she comes to speak to us. Thank you. So may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated and make yourselves comfortable at home. So firstly, oh, I am rather loud, aren't I? Is it the microphone here? Oh, there we are. How's that? Can you hear me now? Good. Firstly, on this Bible Sunday, thank you from the Bible Society for your support of our work as a church. The Word of God is not coming back empty, but with a great harvest of people who've encountered Jesus, the living Word, through the pages of the Bible all over the world. Our passage from Isaiah this morning, I think it's a great passage. I do encourage you to read it for yourselves again this week. There's so much in it, written thousands of years ago by a prophet to God's people who had been in exile. During the pandemic, we've had to have some time away from each other, from loved ones, or even from church. But God's people had been away in exile for 70 years. Exile is being removed from our known surroundings or routines, or relationships. It's when we say to ourselves, this feels foreign. 
And perhaps you feel that we and the church have experienced something of an exile over the last 18 months. As Andrew Ollerton, author of the Bible course says, exile is more than just an event in the Bible. It's a deep metaphor that explains a universal condition that we still experience today. For Israel, God's people, they were unsure as to what the new normal would look like when they returned home. But they drew on the Bible, the same resource book of truth, history and values to determine how they would tackle it together. Isaiah 55 was written to encourage them for their return home and their return to worship in the temple. So what might Isaiah's encouragement mean to us today? Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen, that you may live. This is an invitation. Actually, can we go back to the other slide? We're not quite there. I will give you a little wiggle finger. <laughs> Thank you. This is an invitation for us. I love it when an invitation lands on the mat or in my inbox, don't you? It makes you feel special. To be part of God's plan is not to push in or persuade, but to be invited. No sharp elbows are required. It's an open arms invitation. And the invitation is to all who are thirsty. Next image. This is an image of Bible Society's first show garden at Chelsea this year. We won gold and two other awards. It is the Psalm 23 garden. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. People flocked in their thousands. I had the privilege of being there. It was truly moving to see people drawn to this garden and invited just to stand and reflect by the waters. Scripture speaking to thirsty people after a time of exile. The invitation in Isaiah is to thirsty people who are thirsting for more, for a life without the pains of emptiness, to those who thirst for love and keep looking in all the wrong places, to those who thirst for justice in their own lives and in the life of the world. And furthermore, it's those who have no money. Did you notice that in the reading? No money who are invited to the banquet. In Hebrew, well, Hebrew thinking, this can mean the poor, but it's also the outsider, the one who feels they have nothing to offer. The one who feels that they have been forgotten. You don't have to qualify or measure up in some way. This banquet is free. The invitation is also to those who labour. The prophet is in tune with those who are perhaps working themselves into the ground without seeing any lasting results. And this may be our experience too. If we are working in order to be a success, or to be liked, to matter, we are invited to stop. And the whole of this thirst-quenching scripture, the written word, points to Jesus, the living word. The Bible was written to signpost us to Jesus. All the Old Testament pointing to the coming of the promised one, 
and we have that rich journey to make through Advent starting next week. Jesus himself said in the New Testament that he was living water. We are invited to come to him, to know him and never be thirsty again. He satisfies our thirst for meaning in our lives. I'd like to share a, a quick story with you. Last year, uh, the Bible Society of Lebanon asked for prayer after there was the chemical blast in Beirut. Do you remember that new story? 200 people were killed and seven and a half thousand people injured. And this year, the Bible Society of Lebanon um, has said that God has answered their prayers. They've been able to repair the Bible Society Centre and they have in fact distributed 9,000 Bibles or scripture portions to people who were affected by the blast, helping them to regain hope. But the recent really big surprise has been the young people. One of the Bible workers in Lebanon said this, the young people were thirsty to know more about Jesus and the scriptures. In the first quarter of 2020, before the pandemic took hold, 2,000 young people were engaging with the scriptures online. Whereas in the first quarter of this year, it was 40,000 young people engaging with the scriptures online. So in Lebanon, amidst the poverty and the struggles, there is a real thirst for the Bible and for Jesus. Are we thirsty? May I invite you this Advent to sign up for a free online Advent encounter. There'll be daily scripture readings, reflections, videos, prayers, a thirst-quenching journey to the heart of the Christmas story. You can sign up for free through our Bible Society website. Or order a family Advent box, an F-A-B, FAB great acronym. Um, this is a resource for all the family to share. I brought one today, in fact, for you to see through in the hall if you're interested. Come, all you who are thirsty. And the invitation is to life. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. God says, regardless of how you've treated me, I will never forsake you. I am going to love you to the end and bring you back, back to life, life in all its fullness. To a people coming out of exile, God says, don't stop believing. My covenant is everlasting. And this invitation slide. Yes, thank you. This invitation is from Jesus. Jesus is God coming good on his word. Jesus is God's faithful love and covenant with skin and flesh on. As Jesus died on the cross, he said, I am thirsty. Well, of course, Jesus was physically thirsty, but he also said this as a symbol of what the cross was achieving. He thirsted so we don't have to. He took on our death so that we can have his life. He was exiled so that we can come home. And in John 7, 37, it says, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. His promise really is for anyone and everyone. Some of us might find this invitation difficult to accept. We might struggle to think that we could be loved. But God says in today's passage in Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. He's saying, I don't respond like you. My love is not like your love. 
You simply don't have a way of measuring or even understanding the depth, the width, the height of my love. And a love like, like this means that we can come out of exile despite all the uncertainty that we face and we are invited to rest in the knowledge that we are loved and will always be loved. So if invitation was part one, finally part two, our call. God never invites in without calling out. This calling pattern we see throughout the whole Bible. God tells Abraham that he would bless him and that he should go and be a blessing to others. And Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. Israel's call was to go out to the nations that did not know God. We are called to invite others to what we ourselves have been invited into. <coughs> and as we come out of exile, let me suggest that this invitation has never been more needed and more relevant. I'd like to encourage you with a short video thanking you and sharing how your support means that your church is enabling God's word to go out into the nations and not coming back empty. <coughs> Thank you. God's word. It's amazing, right? You know, between us, my wife Kath and I have got study Bibles, paraphrases, pocket-sized Bibles, backpack-sized Bibles, even triple XL-sized Bibles. See, in our lounge, on top of the piano, we've even got a family-sized Bible taking pride of place. You know, the kind that would give you a hernia if you try and pick it up. What I'm trying to say is, we're not short of Bibles. And that's before you even pick up your smartphone, an array of apps with your favourite passages at your fingertips. You know, 200 years ago, a 15-year-old Welsh girl called Mary Jones walked a marathon of miles for the Bible. It speaks both of her hunger, but also the scarcity of Scripture. Well, that's what started Bible society. But you know, even today, not everyone has a Bible today. After being track in Malawi, Sunway Church, they're doing some great things. There's this library scheme they've set up where children can freely rent out a Bible and bring it back. Only issue is, there's so little Bibles and so many children, sometimes kids have to wait six months just for their turn. Imagine that, waiting half a year just to read 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient. Then there's the, the a Chinese pastor who looks after eight separate churches and has to hike hills and scale cliffs just to deliver a sermon. I mean, don't get me wrong, the growth in the Church of China is incredible. But the pastors and teachers are thin on the ground. Just ask as he do. And what about George, who's heading up our Bible mission work in Syria, connecting with vulnerable believers who are struggling to deal with the trauma of a decade of war? and now need hope more than ever. And what about closer to the home? We may have access to God's word in this country, but are people opening the book? The reality is, we're grateful, because with your help, we get to give out tens of thousands of printed Bibles in Malawi every year, so kids don't just get to learn God's word, but keep it. We're so grateful, because with your help, we're setting up scholarships for students that can help pastors like Zidu shepherd the flock in China. We're so grateful, because with your help, we get to help George partner with local churches in Syria to walk alongside vulnerable believers in their ongoing trauma. We get to be part of helping them find healing as we point them to the Bible as the great source of comfort, love, wisdom, and guidance. And what about on a doorstep? We're running 28 Bible courses in prisons and we get to open the book and tell Bible stories to over a million children at school assemblies on a regular basis. 
the same regret will you? It's an understatement. Not just for your gifts, but for your prayers. The reality is you're a blessing and you're blessing real people, real churches, real communities on the ground. Thank you. Because the reality is this could not be done without you. God's I'd be delighted to tell you more after the service over coffee if you'd like to know more or support our work individually. But just imagine what would happen in our communities here in St John's, here in Jersey, if we had such faith in God's unfailing word and we really were willing to accept God's call on our lives. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Just like your unique fingerprint, God has uniquely shaped and wired you. As the American theologian Tim Keller says, there are some needs only you can see. There are some hands only you can hold. There are some people only you can reach. So will we accept our call? Who might we offer living water to this Christmas? Take one of our Christmas booklets for children today. Somebody that you know. And I know there's one here this morning who might like one. Order some for a local school or project. Order online booklets for those who are asking questions. Help them unpack the Christmas story. Come and have a look at some of the resources that I have after the service. Or could we invite someone who may be thirsty to come to church over Christmas? If we accept the invitation found in God's word, however challenging the path ahead is, we drink from thirst-quenching word and we will find the encouragement that lifts our hearts and moves us with a compassion for those who don't yet know the welcome of the banquet. Let's ask God for strength and courage this coming Advent season to be generous inviters to the feast. Thank you so much for those words, Cathy, and I, I love that phrase of being generous inviters to the feast. We've, we've got quite a lot of events coming up involving food, like church lunch and dinners and things, and um, we can invite people to those, but we can invite them to, to come to church uh, during Advent and Christmas to, to feast on God's word as well and to share the invitation that God has given us. So thank you, Cathy, and do chat to Cathy after the service as well. And now we remain seated as Beryl is going to lead us in our prayers. <coughs> this morning there is a response. When I say, Lord, hear us, please respond with, Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, we thank you for being a loving and caring God and for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, and the promise of eternal life for all who believe and put their trust in him. We thank you for your book, the Bible, a daily guide to living and growing into the people you want us to be. We thank you for the work of the Bible Society translating and distributing Bibles around the world so that people can read your word in their own language. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We thank you for this Sunday. We come before you with grateful hearts and gratitude 
for guiding us through another week. As we stand on the threshold of a fresh week, full of new beginnings, stir in us desire to come into a deeper relationship with you. Remind us that we are not solely by coming to church on Sunday that we can worship and come before you, but it is through walking with you each day. Help us to make time in our busy lives for you. Lord, hear us. Oh, Almighty God, we pray for your church throughout the world and all church leaders and ministers and ask that you give them strength as they continue to guide and care for us all. We especially give thanks and pray for Archbishop Justin, Bishop Karen, Dean Mike and our Rector Beverly. With Christians together in Jersey, we pray for the Jersey Baptist Church and Pastor Jew, Drew Waller. We also pray for the Leprosy Mission, which is one of the charities that we support. We pray for their work in their fight against leprosy transmission, disability and the dis discrimination it causes. Lord, hear us. Lord, Our prayer for growth. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and prayer to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Healing God, we pray for comfort and healing for everyone in hospital or unwell at home and those in care homes, especially remembering Lucy in Clifton, Tony and Pam in Lakeside. Excuse me. We pray for healing for John Slack, who is poorly and undergoing tests, and for Val Wood, who is having treatment at Southampton Hospital. In a moment of quiet, be blushing out loud on the quietness of your hearts and of anyone in need of God's blessing and healing at this time. that you meet the needs of each one of them today and you lead ahead. Lord, hear us. Faithful God, as we look forward to the week ahead, we pray for an awareness of your love and support in all we do. You were able to use ordinary people like fishermen and brought out the best in them in order to spread your word of love peace, joy and justice. <coughs> we pray that you will place opportunities before us and give us the confidence to boldly witness for you and proclaim your gospel and help us to be a shining light in our neighbourhood, at work and everywhere we go this week. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Would you please stand? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we offer one another a sign of peace by waving at one another. <laughs> And now we remain standing for our next hymn, The Splendour of the King. And this hymn is, is on, the, on the screen only, The Splendour of the King.
thank God for the offering. To give to the ministry and mission of St John's Parish Church, please give on the collection plate or using the card reader in church or follow the link tinyl.com stroke St John's Church Journey to our online giving page. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the gifts that will be given this morning and for those given by other means. Use them for the relief of need and for the growth of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please be seated. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him, and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink his holy gifts, may this one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal soul of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. All who love the Lord Jesus are welcome to come forward and receive bread. If you prefer to receive a blessing, please come forward with your head bowed and your hands by your sides. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
After communion, we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now it's time for our church family news. Uh, we've, we've restarted our notice sheet, so if you didn't get one on the way in, do grab one on the way out and take that home with you and have a look at what's coming up. And I'll mention a few things. My name is Beverly, and it's lovely to gather in person and online for our service of Holy Communion this morning. Welcome to everyone here in church and online, uh, and do stay for coffee after the service. Our services next Sunday morning are 8 o'clock um, traditional Holy Communion and 9.30 contemporary Holy Communion uh, in church and on Facebook. Um, and I'll come into the Advent Service for Remembrance next. Um, thank you to everyone who took part um, and attended our St John's Group of Churches United Service of Remembrance last week. Um, we, we had, um, it was lovely to see so many people in church, people joining us online, um, and also gathered around the War Memorial, and uh, we received over £450 for the collection for the Royal British Legion, so thank you so much. Next Sunday is our Advent Service of Remembrance at half past four. It's a, it's a lovely, gentle, quiet, reflective service where we remember before God loved ones who have died. If you'd like the name of a loved one included in the service, um, then please let myself or Ali know by, um, by tomorrow, by Monday, um, uh, by email or, or, or phone or letting one of us know. This year, our three kings, we have um, about this big, figures of kings from our nativity, um, and they, um, they're going to set off next week and go to somebody's house uh, and then if you want to take part you sign up um, and there's a road to where they get passed from household to household you, you take them on to the next person and take them a little gift they give you a cup of tea and a, and a cake or biscuit and you can get to know one another and the, the three kings include a, a story and a prayer with them it's great to um, have on your mantelpiece or maybe in your window as a way of um, chatting with family or or neighbours about the, the Christmas story. Um, so do sign up on the welcome sheet if you'd like to take part. This is the last Sunday to, to sign up. Um, coming up, we have our Christmas lunch on Sunday, the 5th of December at 12 noon at the Brunch Cafe at the Rec Centre. So um, also we've only got a few spaces left for that. So please do sign up on the sheet on the welcome table for the Christmas lunch. And, um, and Graham and I are inviting people for dinner at the rectory. We've got several dates over the next few months, so take a look at the sheet. There's a date next Saturday, one in January, February, March, I think. Uh, sign up uh, yourself or with a partner or a friend uh, and come along and we're happy, we'll just be having a few people around for, for supper over several evenings. Coming up, we've got the gift, Christmas musical celebration on Sunday the 19th of December at half past two and half past four. Um, there'll be, uh, you'll have to get a ticket, but it'll be free. And just keep an eye on the Facebook page uh, and the email for when we release the link with the, the link to book free tickets for the gift. Um, one of the organisations we support in prayer and missionary giving is Mission to Seafarers. And we've been asked to support them by donating toiletries um, underneath the table in the office is now just chock a block full of uh, bags of toiletries. So thank you to everyone who's donated already. And there's a box under the welcome table if you'd like to 
I donate any toiletries to Mission to Seafarers and they're all being sent to men and women who are unable to get ashore over Christmas. Thank you so much to Cathy Mauling for joining us this morning. Can we also a big thank you to Cathy? a card and just a little, little something to say thank you and, and just on behalf of the church we'd like to give you this check for 200 pounds for the bible society for our support for bible society so uh, it's just a privilege to be able to support you and we we are praying for all our missionary organizations you know week by week so we we pray for you as, as well thank you so much for coming to speak to us Um, we've got a bonus extra session of Little Oak Sunday Club um, next Sunday the 28th um, because they're going to be preparing for their nativity that they're going to share with us um, during the service on the 5th of December. So if you know any little ones taking part or wanting to be involved then um, invite them to come along next week. And do join us for coffee after the service. Kathy's brought loads of brilliant resources, the, the Fab Family Advent Box and um, various booklets all through in the vestry. So um, you're, you're, are you giving some of those away? Yeah, so some of them are for you to take home and have a look at and do have a chat with Kathy. Now we're going to sing our final hymn. We have a gospel to proclaim. Please stand for our final hymn. We have a gospel to proclaim.
practicing. Um, we don't have any um, new rules from the deanery, but I want to encourage you if, you if you're able to wear a mask while we're moving around in church. Um, it's all right when we're staying put, standing or singing or sitting. But um, uh, do, if you do have a mask uh, the next week and other events, just have a mask while you're uh, coming into church and, and heading out and moving around. Thank you. And now a final blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.